Hey everyone, Liam here. Welcome to this week's video. This week we're going to be going over how to paint a Mechanicum Castellan robot for Games Workshop's Warhammer 40k. If you've got any questions, any feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments below. As always, this video doesn't use an airbrush at all. This one especially is using really simple, basic techniques for nearly all of the robot. So most people at all levels should be able to get a red, relatively nice result. The only thing that's slightly more advanced on this is the face screen on the head. As always, if you want to support the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Feel free to check out my Patreon for additional video content, which is far more in-depth and detailed. There's also options on there for one-to-one -one tuition if you want to improve your painting. And naturally, I am always available for commissions as well. So feel free to get in touch. Check out the links below. And here we go. So as you can see on screen, the Castellan robot is primed in gray. The screen at the moment I've painted black and no most people leave this to the end. In this case, because of the way that I'm going to paint this, I'm going to be painting it at the beginning. So this is the most complicated part of the model when it comes to actually how you're going to paint it. So in this case, I'm going to wet blend the screen. So as you can see, I've got a really light blue up in the top right. And then towards the bottom left, I've got a dark blue. This paint is only thinned down ever so slightly. So it's probably three or four, part, four parts water to one part. Sorry, it's probably three or four parts paint to one part water. So it's a really small amount of water. Put the paint on the model and then you can see that side to side brush stroke motion. And we're pushing and pulling those colors together to get a nice smooth transition. Now, you can see the result we've got at the moment. There's nothing wrong with this. I particularly wasn't happy with it. I wanted the screen a little bit darker. So what that means is I'm going to make some adjustments, but if you like the result that you've got here, just leave it as it is. It all depends on how dark you want the screen or how bright. There's nothing wrong with what we have here, but it's not what I was going for. So next up, I want to increase the contrast in value on this screen. And what I mean by value is my, my difference between light and dark. So first of all, I want to make sure that my I want to push my bright area in the top right even brighter. I don't want to make it larger. I want this really small because if you make it a nice, if you make it a really big, large, bright area, it's going to just make the screen look really bright. So I'm only doing like right at the top right hand corner of this or the it doesn't really have corners, but you know what I mean? And then the bottom left, what we're going to do is I'm going to, instead of using that dark blue, I'm going to push to black and I'm going to do this in a very wide area, in a really large area. So what we'll have is our darkest point is going to be basically black and then our brightest point is almost going to be like an off white. So we have a huge range in contrast to make that center of the head very striking and will give a really high contrast finish in comparison to everything else which will really easily make this the focal point. Now you'll also see when I put the paint on this model, uh, previously what I did was I washed my paint off of my brush and then with a damp brush, I'm just feathering out the edge of this paint. What that means is, is I'm just where the, we drop the paint down, the line where the, our brush mark finishes, I'm just softening that out so we don't have such a hard line. Again, this is the most advanced part of the tutorial, so I apologize that if you want to know more about how to wet blend and how to do feathering, then I've got videos on there on my Patreon if that's helpful. So you can see now that we've gone from very dark in the bottom left to really bright in the top right. You can also see the blends aren't really that great. They're, they're not bad, don't be wrong, but there's a lot of imperfections on them. So this doesn't have to be perfect because it's very early stages. What we can do later is add a couple of glazes in and it will help hide some of those marks. But you can see the result that I'm going for at the moment, which I'm quite happy with. So very small jump ahead here. I've painted, I've now painted black around this screen. And the reason for that is, is because I want to get a really clear idea of what this blue looks like in isolation. And the gray doesn't really give me a very good indication of that. And also I'd gone over the gray with the blue, which I didn't really want. Um, and it, it, it impairs how we see it as a finished piece. So sometimes it's really good just to paint around what you've painted and it gives you an idea of what it really looks like. Now I'm just going over and I'm getting the mid-tone blue, 
which I believe is dark Prussian blue. I've thinned it down to six or seven parts water and I'm just glazing over the whole thing. And all that does is it just softens out some of those more questionable brush marks that I've gone on over it, which from, from where I've painted relatively quickly. Now, the next part is where we start to make it look kind of reflective. Now, I want to point out with this, I did not do any research. I didn't want to look at loads of photographs for references. I wanted something which was very simple and straightforward for which was relatively easy to replicate across an army. So the first thing that I decided to do was with the same blue that I used as the highlight and the top right, I'm now painting a line all the way around the outside of this lens that runs alongside the, the edge of the lens. And what I would say to you with this is this is where you want a nice brush. You want a really good tip on it. So get your paint on your brush, remove the excess, pull the brush towards you on a piece of cloth or tissue roll or your hand and twist it as you do. And that will restore the point. And then when you're doing your brush stroke, make sure that you exhale as you do it. And then what that will do is it will help steady your hands. I appreciate some people have got medical issues when it comes to shaky hands. Uh, I'm not sure how to manage that. But for me, I do just genuinely have shaky hands. It's not a medical issue as far as I'm aware. And I know I can mitigate that by exhaling as I do it. Can also hold your breath, but I don't personally recommend that because if you're doing lots of detail work, then eventually that's going to start catching up with you. And there's going to be um, side effects from just holding your breath for far too long while you're painting. When you get into the bright area in the top right, add some white to that blue so you go even brighter because obviously you're not going to see it with the blue that we're currently using. So add some white so you've got an even brighter blue than your highlight area. And what that will do is it will mean that you can actually pick out that bright area with that frame that goes around the end, around the edge, around the outside edge, sorry. So you can see me doing it. What I would probably say to you is I have a very bad habit for doing lots of tiny little brush marks. This is something that I've just done for a long time now. What I would probably suggest is if you're trying to get a nice clean brush stroke, so a nice clean line, try and do it in one long brush stroke because what you'll find is, is it will be much easier just to keep a consistent line. Whereas if you're doing what I'm doing and doing lots of tiny little brush marks, Actually, what ends up happening is you, you it can be incredibly difficult to match up the width of the line that you previously painted. So in this case, don't copy my bad habits. So this is where the reflection starts. Now, again, I did not want to do anything hyper realistic. I wanted to do something very simple purely because it's a game piece and I thought it'd be helpful for what we're trying to aim for with the YouTube video. So what I decided to do was paint a line on either side of the helmet, both of which are symmetrical. So, and the way that I wanted to do it is I, it's almost like a, a teardrop line. So it goes a little bit fatter towards the bottom. And if you also look, the shape of the line is the same shape as the left hand side of the curve of the faceplate of the side of the screen. And it's going to be exactly the same on the right hand side. Curve of this line is going to be the same curve as we have on the right hand side of the right hand shape of the screen. This is really important. The curve of the line gives the impression that or reinforces the impression that this surface is curved. If you do a straight line, it's going to look incredibly out of place and unnatural. So just something to think about. And then I added a couple of dots and smaller lines around it. So next up, what we're going to do is I'm now going to put Tamiya masking tape over the faceplate because the way that I'm going to paint this is very messy. So I'm now going to cover this with Tamiya masking tape so I don't have to worry about it at all. Now the reason why I did this faceplate first is firstly because I knew that I wanted to do a very fast blend at the beginning because I wasn't using an airbrush and the wet blending is very messy and I didn't want to have to worry about getting that over the armor if I had already painted it. So that's why I did the face plate. Then we add the masking tape. What we're going to do is move on to the red. 
and what we'll do is we'll then mask up the red and then do the white so the idea of this is is nearly all of the process for painting this model is very messy messy very straightforward you don't have to be overly precise and it just makes it far more interesting in my opinion so next up what i've done is all of the areas on this model that i want to be red i've painted black and the reason for that is is because i want a very saturated red so a very strong vibrant almost like a blood red as saturated as i can go now the problem with that is is it means that i don't want to highlight this i don't want to make when i go to the bright areas i don't want to add any white or anything like that because it will make it go pink or orange so the way that i do this is i start with black and this gives me a very dark start it gives me a very dark shadow to my red tone and what i'm going to do i'm almost going to do a bit of a dry brush here so i'm using p3 sanguine base and i've got a massive old makeup brush this is a cheap brush cost me a pound from poundland i love these brushes they're amazing um, you can get far more expensive versions as well artist opus do some really good brush good um, dry brushing brushes whatever works the difference here is you can see that I'm there's a lot of paint coming off of here I'm not removing as much paint as you would a dry brush I'm removing the excess paint and the idea with this is we're just building up our darkest value of red so I'm going over the majority of the black or nearly all of the back black basically with this red this sanguine base color and the reason why I did it black first of all is first of all if I want to I can leave the black there to give me a really dark shadow which is what I've done at the bottom of the knee but actually what it does is it makes our red much darker so if we were to put this red over a white it'd be much more vibrant and I don't want that because we've, we're going to have the armor is going to be very bright so I want a very dark deep red next up I'm going to get my nice strong red. In this case, this is my brightest red. In this case, I'm using P3 Cador Red. And I'm effectively, <coughs> it's basically a dry brush with slightly wet paint. Uh, some people have said to me that some that this is like, some people call this overbrushing. I'm not going to lie. I don't know. Um, I've, I've never been taught this. I don't know if there is a if if there is a, a name for it or anything like that. But the idea is I'm basically dry brushing this with a little bit more paint on my brushes than than normal. And what that does is it it almost smudges the paint on. That's pretty much it. It's like we're smudging paint onto this model. And you can see that I'm just building up that red towards the brighter areas that I want. And that's how I'm getting my transition on this. And that's how I'm getting my nice red. One thing that I would say to you with this, as you're building up the paint, make sure you give it time to dry. So jump around to different parts of this red on the model that you're doing, because you have the risk of as this paint dries and you start, if you keep building up over the same thing that you're painting, you can tear the paint and take a big chunk out of it. And that can be quite difficult to fix, especially if you're a little less experienced. So build the red up move on to another area and then once it's had a couple of seconds to dry come back to it and build it up again to make it more vibrant but you can see where we're at with this at the moment so you can see once again i've got masking tape all over the model basically i've masked it masked up all of the areas that i want to keep red i'm using tamiya masking tape again in my opinion in my experience this is the best masking tape that you can get the, what we're going to do now is we're going to paint on the white armor. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, blue paint. So, first of all, what we're doing with this is the blue paint is P3 Troll Blood Blue. Let's treat you P3. Yeah. P3 Troll Blood Base. If you don't have this paint, basically any bright blue like a sky, a sky blue, ice blue something like that add a little bit a little bit add a little bit of black to it and what it will do is it will turn it more gray before it goes darker and that's pretty much what you're going for the idea with this is is when we're painting white we don't actually want that much white we want another color to shade it with in this case i chose blue the reason for that is is because by the time we take the masking tape off and we have the red the red's going to be really nice and warm while we have a very cold white tone 
that was the reason for the choice. So what I would say to you with this is when you are painting around the masking tape, try and start your brush on the masking tape and move it off. Because what will happen is, is if you've got any gaps, like you can see that my masking tape as the helmet's got such a weird curve to it or an awkward curve to it, there's a little bit of gaps where the masking tape has folded. You don't want to get paint under those little bits. You start on the masking tape and work off of it. And that way you're going to have much less chance of pushing the paint under that masking tape and you'll get a much nicer finish with it. You can see I'm not really being very careful. My paint is relatively thick. So the generally like in this case, it's two parts water to one part paint. The idea being you want the paint as opaque as possible while still being fluid enough to it doesn't obscure details. Because again, you don't want that paint too thin. So it um, so it seeps underneath the masking tape. So next up, we're going to add a little bit of white to that P3 troll blood orange. Uh, troll blood base and that's all we're going to do here we're going to keep adding more and more white to this mix and we're going to keep building up our layers now with this what we're going to do is nice and simple go back to that makeup brush we are effectively dry brushing now what i would say to you the more paint that you have on your brush the more of a smudge mark that you're going to get and what that means is is more of a softer transition you're going to get and the less texture you're going to get in your brush mark. So basically the smoother the result you will get. Uh, and if you want an example of how smooth you can get that result and hand how to do this particular technique in more detail, check out the playlist here on YouTube for the Brass Scorpion video on how I painted the red armor. That's pretty much what it is. But with this particular model, I was really enjoying the, the, the texture from a more traditional dry brushing standpoint. So what I did was, is I removed a little bit more paint than normal. What that does is it, it's it's more towards the dry brushing rather than the, the overbrush as they call it, um, or so I'm told. And that gives us a bit more of a grainy finish, which considering I was gonna weather this, because remember this is supposed to be a really quick, uh, relatively quick, simple process. I thought it would fit better with the whole worn Castellan idea. So in this case, I'm pushing more towards a dry brush. There's very little paint on my brush. The difference is I'm trying not to, the difference between a not a traditional dry brush and this is I'm trying not to catch edges. Actually, what I'm doing is really ramming my paintbrush into the areas that I just want brighter. So you can see towards the top of the head, that's already getting brighter. The Towards the top of the chest is getting brighter. I'm just leaving that P3 troll blood, troll blood base in the recesses and not going over it and that's starting to give me my shadows so i'm going to speed this footage up even more now basically all you're watching is me doing exactly what i've just done exactly what i've just explained but i'm adding more and more white until i get to a point that i'm happy with how bright my paint is now i haven't actually gone all the way up to pure white on this model that's something to bear in mind but you can go as bright as you want with it. Normally, if you just go to an off-white, it will look white. But remember, we're leaving more and more of the previous layers of paint in the darker areas, and that's what gives us a nice transition.
So once we remove the masking tape from the model, for the red and the helmet, you get a really good idea of what it's looking like right now. Now, I like this result, but what we need to do next is we need to make a decision on whether we want that, whether we want to add some weathering. In this case, I wanted to, and there's a really big reason for that. Going for a very fast, easy, simple, stress-free, nice tabletop result. The benefit of weathering is, is when you're trying to paint quickly and when you're batch painting armies, what you can use weathering to hide some of your more dodgy brush marks or your mistakes. So for me, it's a really great tool to use when I'm army painting because it means that I don't have to be as careful about everything. And that's really quite a big deal. So you can see that I've jumped ahead here. The only thing that I've done different since that last clip is I've painted in the metallic areas with scale 75 thrash metal. So it's just, um, it's a bit like the old, it's a bit like lead belcher from GW, quite a dark silver. That's all I've done. Um, and I've put a bit of a wash in it. That's it. Now, with the idea for this being a tabletop piece, normally I would do this stage with a paintbrush because I like to have a bit more control. But again, tabletop piece, so we're going to do it with a sponge. The blue sponge that you can see on screen being used is an old sponge from a, I think it's a KR multi case, but you can use blister sponge, whatever works. Now, what I'm doing is I've got Games Workshop Rhinox Hide on the palette. I'm dipping the sponge. I tear the sponge up so I've got a nice random shape to the end of it. Dip the sponge into the GW Rhinox Hide. Remove any excess. So I test what the mark is going to look like on my hand. So I stab the brush, the sponge, sorry, onto my hand. And what you'll do is you'll see the pattern that it's going to create. And then I gently stab the model or touch the model with the sponge and what that does is it gives us a nice um, inconsistent chip in mark which gives you the result that you can see on screen now there are far more advanced versions of this again we want this nice and simple so this is how we're doing it now in this case i'm using the rhinox hide for the white areas i haven't gone over any of the red because the rhinox hide is not going to work so what we're going to do next is I'm going to mix a very light blue. So almost the white, but it's still got some blue in it. And I'm going to once again get another bit of sponge. And the difference here is I'm going to go over the red with this blue-white mix. So it matches the armor. And the idea with this is if you put the Rhinox hide on it, it's going to be too dark and you won't notice it. But if you put this white and blue mix over the red, it's almost like the red paint has scratched off and there's white underneath it. Again, you don't have to do it this way, but gives a very striking and striking result with which works in harmony with what you already have. So for me works. It looks nice from far away and you can see the result. Right, so Forgive me for this, but when with the base, um, I was doing the base as I was painting this. So there's going to be certain parts with this base where I kind of skip backwards. So the model's gonna not going to look as finished. But you can see that I've glued a few pieces of, of bark onto the base. This is what's going to be rocks effectively. Now, these you can find in like playgrounds and flower beds and that sort of stuff. They're, they're nothing overly special. They're just pieces of wood, basically and they've got quite a nice texture to them. And then what I'm gonna do is, I've laid down some PVA glue, it's just cheap, I don't know, white glue, PVA glue, whatever you call it. And I've got a mix, a uh, sand mix. The, the mix of sand is sharp sand and builder's sand. So it's nothing overly special. It's not particularly realistic, but I think for gaming pieces, it works quite well. I've covered the whole base in it. Now, the next step is a bit different to what I've shown in other videos. Before this sand dries, what I've just done is hair dryer that sand. So the PVA glue is partially dry. It's not completely dry. It's just dry enough where if you shake the shake it around quite a lot or run your finger along it, along the sand, it's not all just going to tear up and you're not going to have wet glue. Almost like that glue is damp. 
Then what I'm doing is grabbing GW Martian Iron Earth. This is just one of their crackle paints. Any other crackle paints will work fine. And I'm placing this crackle paint over the base in certain areas. Now, the reason why it's important to do this when the PVA glue isn't completely dry is because what's going to happen, I've shown you in the past, when you put this crackle paint over the, the like sand and that sort of stuff, what happens is it kind of lifts and you get lots of really cool shapes. But what's going to happen this time is where the crackle paint dries, not only is the crackle paint going to kind of lift, it's going to lift up entire sections of the actual sand that we put underneath. So what's going to happen is you're going to have huge craters which almost lift up like that. And I'll show you that. And it's a really interesting result for very little effort. So you can see this on screen now. You can see how you can see the gray base through these cracks. It's literally the, the cracking in the paint has torn that sand up because what happens is the PVA glue creates like a layer. It's almost like a skin that the sand sticks to. But where it's not quite dry, it's not strong enough to hold itself together. As the crackle paint cracks, tears that PVA glue apart, gives it this really nice result. Now, what I would say, because I do these on stream, um, I was under a little bit of pressure. And what I forgot to do is I should have painted the base black underneath. So before you do this, paint the base a base color that you're happy with to be underneath. So for in this case, I should have done black or like a dark brown because the base is going to be brown. But I forgot, so I just gave myself a little bit of work. But you can see what we've got. The result is, is fairly nice. It's not a lot of work at all. It took me about five minutes to do it um, and then a couple of minutes blasting the hairdryer over it and then leaving it to dry. So what we're going to do next, I'm painting the whole base with Games Workshop Rhinox Hide. Nice and simple. As you can see, it looks quite messy, but that's fine. I've base coated the Rhinox hide on. <clears throat> Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush P3 Rucksack Tan over the whole base. This will just make the details pop out and those shapes and cracks that we've created. Now, what I would say is use a dry brush um, or use a brush that's actually meant to. My problem is, again, because I did this on stream, it wasn't as dry as I wanted it to be. So I had to use quite a soft brush, which is why the, the brush that I'm using doesn't isn't isn't the best choice but it was kind of a necessity after i've done that i'm also going to dry brush uh p3 ivory of some kind men off white which is basically like a bone color it's like an ivory color and all i'm doing with that is i'm just going to dry brush that over the brightest the brightest the the most prominent parts like the rocks the tops of the cracks that sort of stuff and then lastly, I'm adding some, I think they're Army Painter Grass Tufts, they're Deadland Tufts. And what that does is it just gives some interest to the base. And what it also does, why, the reason why I like Grass Tufts when it comes to the gaming pieces is because if you've made any mistakes on the base or if you, you see any boring parts of the base um, or you've torn up some of the basing material by accident, what you can do is just put a grass tuft over it and it looks great. And you won't you, you won't see it so these are the tufts in this case i've gone for a really dark brown i don't want them standing out i don't want the base to be really prominent or anything like that i wanted a really dark base because then that makes this bright white um it makes this bright white mechanicum robot robot stand out even more it's almost like it gives it a little bit of a frame and that's it you can see the robot on screen I hope this video has been helpful, as always. With the exception of the screen, it's effectively just dry brushed and sponged together. I have obviously painted the rest of the details, but as always with this series, I paint the details with a base coat and then I just put a wash over them, not doing anything over the top. If you get the armor and the main features looking nice, no one's looking at the details. As always, you got any questions, feel free to let me know. I will put a list of paints in the description so you can check it out and copy the scheme if you want. This process works for any color. The fact that I've done this with white proves that because white is an absolute nightmare. Let's be perfectly honest. But thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, you want to support me, feel free to check out my Patreon. It means a huge amount and I'll see you next week.